Once an Avenger is a great example of a hero mission, a single player campaign experience focusing on a specific playable character. Hero missions give us a chance to tell more of each hero's story and showcase the variety and depth of our hero designs. Let's take a quick look at how Thor plays. With the game's combat systems, players can string together combos of heavy and light attacks or hold for signature attacks. Combat versatility is one of Thor's strengths. From making use of Mjolnir to pin enemies from a distance or bringing the sky down on his foes. In addition to core combat moves, the God of Thunder has a wide variety of skills to unlock that give him access to classic moves. This is one of our favorites, manual targeting. We largely drew our influence from writer Jason Aaron's run on the Mighty Thor comic. Manual targeting allows you to quickly mark your enemies for bullseyes with Mjolnir, and one by one, you can mark them and knock them down as Mjolnir comes back to you. Follow that up with a powerful ground pound and you've got a mighty combo. Manual targeting is a great ranged attack, but if up close and personal is more your style, go with the hammer spin or Mjolnir Cyclone. Heroes have three special heroic moves, Assault, Ultimate, and Support. When designing our heroics, we started with the signature moves from the comics and movies that we've always wanted to play. The Assault Heroic charges the fastest, and in some cases, you can store multiple charges to use strategically as a part of your combos. You can perform these after charging your heroic meters with normal attacks. For instance, Natasha's Assault Heroic is Widow's Bite, which is an electroshock projectile move you might recognize. You can see Nat using it right here. Each hero also has a unique support heroic that's designed to enhance co-op and team play. For example, Thor's support, Warrior's Fury, lets him channel the power of the gods to supercharge his Odin force and grants a period of invulnerability for nearby team members. You can see this in action when Iron Man gets the buff as he flies through Thor's support. Ultimates take longer to charge, but they're definitely worth the wait. They have more screen clearing power, and some even have residual effects, like Thor's Bifrost Ultimate. Thor's Ultimate Heroic channels the power of the Nine Realms, and his Bifrost taps into Muspelheim to bypass unbreakable shields, allowing Thor to use the power of the Bifrost Bridge to do maximum damage. We know everyone plays differently, so we have melee, ranged, aerial, and ground combat skills to tailor your hero to your playstyle. As your heroes earn experience, they gain access to new skills. Skill points allow you to unlock new moves, combos, and even new versions of attacks. As you build up your heroes, you begin to see how unlocking and mastering the separate core skills offers a ton of depth and variety on its own for every hero. And that's before gear, perks, artifacts, and any kind of later game progression. So why is all of this important? Because it means your Thor will play differently than my Thor, and my Hulk will play different than yours. Another way to customize your heroes is with gear. We've previously talked about the different rarities and how perks will give you powerful modifiers for even more customization. Some perks apply special damage like plasma or gamma, or cause status effects like shrink, which will shrink enemies and reduce damage and defense. You can see Iron Man using Gamma Gear in this shot, and eagle-eyed fans probably noticed his laser sweep was green instead of red. Nope, that wasn't a bug. When you have Gamma Gear equipped, it grants a bonus damage modifier and changes the emissive color of your attack. And voila, green lasers. 